Okay, hello YouTube. So this video is a visual explanation of Miles Mathis's disproof of certain key assumptions Isaac Newton, and virtually all subsequent mathematicians up to the present day, made concerning the nature of motion along a curve. The specific problem being analyzed is from Newton's Principia, Book 1, Section 1, Lemma 6. So Newton is claiming that as B approaches A, the limit of angle BAD equals zero. Mathis claims that while Newton's concept of limits may be useful in analyzing static problems, that is, problems that do not consider time as a variable, Newton's concepts of limits is invalid for the situation of curved motion. Mathis is claiming that Newton's definition of limits, which has been in standard use for over 300 years now, does not apply to motion along a curve. The link to his original document can be found in the description of this video. Here's Mathis. In the lemma, Newton is studying a diminishing interval in order to analyze curved motion. For instance, he uses this ana analysis immediately afterwards to apply to an orbit. The limit analysis treats the entire problem as an abstract, whereas since it is being used to analyze curved motion, it is actually a physical problem. Okay, so this is me again. At this point, Mathis makes his great intellectual leap. We know from Einstein that motion changes our frame of reference. Objects moving at different speeds are in two diff totally separate reference frames, and measurements must be treated differently depending on which reference frame the observer is in. As Mathis explains, an event at B cannot be fully equal to the same event as seen from A. If we think of the measurement of an angle as a physical event instead of an abstract geometric quantity, then angles in a diagram like this must be analyzed from a physical point of view. The way that relativity solves this problem is that it provides a way to separate the measurement of angle BAD at B from the measurement of angle BAD at A. According to the limit analysis, both measurements should diminish in the same way. But according to relativity, because they are spatially separated, the two measurements cannot act the same. According to relativity, we must pick one point and measure everything from there. We must study the problem from A or from B, but we cannot study the problem from both places simultaneously. Since we have given the motion to point B, we must let that be our point of measurement. In other words, in this problem, we exist at B. The event is at B. Let that event be angle A, B, D going to the limit. Central angle A, R, B goes to zero, so angle A, B, D goes to 90 degrees. Of course, angle B, A, D is also going to zero, but there is a time lag. As seen or measured from B, Information from A must be late, and vice versa. Therefore, as measured from B, the limit at B must be reached before the limit at A. Or it would be more rigorous to say that angle BAD is smaller as measured from B than angle BAD is measured from A.